Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Today we're talking pork, how much it costs to raise it, how much you can charge for it, and what your expected profit can be. I'm going to do that by running through a simple cost and profit scenario so that you can get an idea of the profit before you ever have a pig on your farm. After that, I'm going to give you some tips on how to have pork cut for maximum profit. Please remember to subscribe to our channel hit the subscribe button down there, and you can follow our series of farm business videos to maximize profits on your small farm. Thank you. Is pork profitable for you? I have a simple way to figure that out before you ever raise a pig, and I'm going to go through that step by step. The first thing you need to do is investigate what you can sell pork for. There's a number of ways to do that. You can go, if you're interested in selling pork by the cut, to your local farmers market and find out what other farmers are charging. If you're interested in selling pork by the half or the whole pig, Craigslist is a good place to go and see what other people are charging. On our area Craigslist it seems like there's always bulk pork for sale like that. Let's say for our example, because I'm going to run through these numbers with you, that we find at the farmers market we can charge six dollars a pound average for pork. Now remember, when you're looking at the farmer's market for pork prices, you won't see the variation that you see in beef. In other words, take our farm for example, we charge $6 a pound for ground pork and our most expensive product is smoked bacon and that's $8 a pound. There's only a $2 range there. With beef, we sell ground beef for $6 a pound, but a premium steak can go for three times that money. So. It's easier to come up with an average for pork prices. You don't need to get real exacting about how much weight each cut is and what the price of each is. You can just come up with a general bar ballpark and that will do for this example. When it comes to selling pork by the whole or half, let's say you use three dollars a pound. And typically with holes or halves, the customer pays the butcher costs, at least in this area, so you charge the customer based on the hanging weight of the pig at say three dollars a pound, they take care of the butcher costs. When you're researching pork prices, you need to make sure that it's equivalently raised pork. In other words, you're talking apples to apples in terms of is it pastured pork, you'll get a premium for that, and is it heritage breed pork, you'll get a premium for that too because it has more flavor than the pink pigs that are typically sold in the supermarket that are less marbled and a lighter color meat. And remember, when you make your marketing plan, you need to tout the differences between that supermarket pork and your pork. Now let's move to the raising cost side of the equation. And again, let's keep it simple. For my example, I'm going to use four basic costs for raising a pig. The cost of purchasing the feeder pig, or the two-month-old piglet. The cost of the feed that you have to feed that piglet to get it up to butcher weight, what the butcher costs are, and the hauling fee, which is minor in the big scheme of things, but let's include it. You can look on Craigslist once again for feeder pig prices in your area. Let's use $75 as a middle of the road example. You can go to the feed store or go online to find out what you would pay for feed. You need to figure about 800 pounds of feed per pig to bring it from that two month old feeder pig size up to a 200 pound dress weight pig. So let's say you find it's 20 cents a pound for feed and 800 pounds, you would wind up with $160 of feed costs for that pig. The next step is to get pricing from local butchers. We figure it's about $1.50 a pound with a moderate amount of smoked meat and sausage, which are upcharges on the butcher side of things. So at $1.50 a pound, that 200 pound dress weight pig will cost you $300 to have butchered. The last cost is the hauler cost. You can bring that feeder pig home in the back of your car in a pet carrier, but you need somebody with a livestock trailer to get the big pig to the butcher. So let's say that that's $30 a pig. If you add all those costs up, you've spent $565 to raise that pig, have it butchered, and back in your freezer. You'll notice in my example I didn't include some of the infrastructure costs or the labor costs. You obviously have to build a pen for the pig, you have to buy a feeder and a waterer, 
um, but I like to keep it simple. The infrastructure costs will be amortized over many batches of pigs, so just leave them out of the equation, as well as your labor. Labor for raising pigs is usually quite minimal. The biggest part of it is if you're selling at the farmer's market, you need to have labor to sell the cuts, but we don't figure that. It's just part of the cost of doing business for us, and we're selling lots of things at the farmer's market. So let's keep it to those four simple costs. Now let's do the math and figure out what your profit would be either selling by the cut or by the half whole. If you're selling by the cut, you can figure that you'll get 150 to 160 pounds of meat back from the butcher from a 200 pound dress weight pig. The rest is trimmings, bones, lard, etc. So if you figure you're going to charge $6 a pound average for that meat, 160 times $6 a pound is $960 in gross income. Your profit would be $960 minus the $565 it cost you to raise and butcher that pig for a total profit of $395. Now, what if you go the selling half or whole route? Well, typically for halves and wholes, we sell by the hanging weight. And say we're charging $3 a pound. Our 200 pound hanging weight pig times $3 a pound is $600 in income. It costs you $265 to raise that pig because remember, the customer usually pays for the butcher costs when you're selling halves and wholes. So your profit is the $600 income <clears throat> minus the $265 is $335. It's a little bit less than the $395 that we got by selling that pig by the cut, but you're spending less time selling it, and it's not sitting in your freezer. It goes right out to the customer. So there are some advantages to that. I have seven easy tips for getting pork cut best for profit. The first is to do bone-in cuts, just as with beef. These are bone-in pork chops. And as with beef, the best meat is by the bone, plus you can charge for the bone. Otherwise, if you did boneless pork chops, the bone would go in the butcher's trash can and the money's lost. Tip number two, have the butcher leave some fat on the cuts. Again, with pork chops, we ask the butcher to leave a quarter to a half inch of fat on the outside. Pork fat is good, it gives flavor and it gives you more weight to sell at market instead of that fat going into the trimmings can. I think that the pork, the other white meat campaign is dead and people have realized that pork needs some fat on it. Tip number three, smoked bacon is overrated. You only get about 18 to 20 pounds per pig of this stuff back and yes you can charge a premium for it but it costs money to have it smoked. So if you have the option, instead of smoking the bacon, sell it as fresh pork belly. It's coming into style now. We have quite a few customers who ask for it and they like to smoke it themselves or use it in other dishes. And you can capture that profit that normally would have went to the butcher for the smoking costs. Tip number four, pork chops are underrated. You can charge a premium for these guys and they're cheap to have cut. Educate your customers about pork chops. I don't know why people aren't having these at least once a week. They're so easy to cook. Brine them for a couple hours, cook them for four minutes on a side on a hot skillet or in a hot grill, and they are absolutely mouth-watering, delicious and juicy. Pork chops are great money makers. Tip number five, smoked hams are a tough sell, except around Christmas and Easter. It's a lot better to forego the cost of having ham smoked and instead have them made into ground pork and sausage. The butcher costs are less and they sell better year round. Tip number six, in general, don't have things smoked if you can sell them fresh. It costs one to two dollars a pound to have things smoked. That's money out of your pocket. Plus, you have the compounding effect of the weight loss that occurs during smoking. Bacon will lose 20 to 30 percent of its weight Hams will lose about 10% of their weight. That's money out of your pocket. If you can sell those fresh, do so. Don't have them smoked. Tip number seven, if you have the option, sell ground pork rather than sausage. 
Sausage cost me close to a buck a pound more than ground pork to have it spiced and cased. Well, that's it for my short porkonomics course. As I've said before, pigs are not the most profitable animal we raise on the farm. But we raise them because we like pork and we feel like it's part of being a full service livestock farm. I guess the best thing about raising pigs is they're a continual challenge. Keeping them clean, keeping their feed and water clean, keeping parasites at bay are all things that we find new approaches to with each batch of pigs and I like that challenge. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.